Hello, my name's Hamish McDonald, and today I'm standing on Culloden Moor. It's the 16th of April 2020, and today is a very significant date in the Scottish historical calendar. This is the anniversary, actually the 274th anniversary, of the Battle of Culloden, which was fought on the 16th of April 1746. You may be able to see the red flag behind me, because I'm standing at the spot where the Duke of Cumberland, who was in command of the Hanoverian government army, uh, assembled his troops. They were fighting the Jacobites who were gathered on the opposite side of the moor. I'm going to make a few short video clips describing parts of the battlefield as I go. Now, it's eerily quiet here today. Normally on the 16th of April, there'd be lots of tourists and visitors, but because of lockdown, um, the place is very quiet. Only a handful of people walking their dogs. Um, because we're under lockdown, I'm allowed to walk from my house, and this is two and a half miles from my house, so this is on my daily walk across Culloden Moor. And um, I'll show you a bit more of the battle as we go. So I'm standing at the government line where Duke of Cumberland's troops assembled. Okay, so we're going to walk across part of the battlefield, and this is a very sombre part of the battlefield. This is where many of the clans are buried. This is the Well of the Dead. And this is the stone where the chief of the clan McGilvery fell. So this was one of the Jacobite warriors who fell uh, right in front of the government line. So he must have got quite far advanced up the field of battle. I don't know if you can hear, but all you can hear today is the, the sound of the skylarks, which is a very prominent sound here in Culloden Moor. I'm walking up, there's more stones up here. They reckon there are something like 1,500 uh, Jacobite dead, buried on this ground, so it's really a mass grave. It really is a very um, powerful and uh, poignant place to be, particularly today on the 16th of April. And um, here's another stone. Uh, this is for the fallen of the clans McGilvery, McLean, McLachlan and the Athol Highlanders. So again, these were all Jacobite soldiers. There's another line of stones. Here we have the Clan Stuart of Appen for the fallen of the Clan Stuart. Someone's left a white rose here, which was the symbol of uh, Prince Charlie who led the Jacobites. People leave all sorts of mementos. It really is very sad. And this is for the fallen of the Clan Cameron. And further up here, as we go, this is for the fallen of the Clan Macintosh. I'm actually a McDonald. The McDonald uh, memorial is on another part of the field, which I'm not covering just now. And here we have another stone. I hope you can hear those skylarks, it's absolutely beautiful. I heard a piper earlier, but it was quite far in the distance. Um, this is for the mixed clans. You can see somebody's left a wreath there and a badge for the clan Macmillan. So, right in the middle of the field, there is the big monument uh, to all the fallen uh, Jacobites. We'll just walk towards that, I'll show you something about this. There's an inscription on this one. Hope you're not getting dizzy with all this movement. And this says... The Battle of Culloden was fought on this moor, 16th April 1746. The graves of the gallant Highlanders who fought for Scotland and Prince Charlie are marked by the names of their clans. I don't know what these things are here, they look like they've been torches, they look like they're quite fresh, they were maybe... Um, I know people carry torches here at night on the anniversary of the battle, um, so it looks like people have been out at night with uh, torches. Hello, I'm sitting just at the back of the monument to the fallen clans, and uh, I'll tell you a bit about the background of the Battle of Culloden. Um, it's very complex, but basically uh, King James II was a Stuart king, who was deposed and overthrown in 1688 due to the Glorious Revolution and the Act of Settlement. 
and he fled to France. His son was the exiled Prince uh, Charles Edward Stuart, who became known as Bonnie Prince Charlie. There were several attempts to restore the Stuart monarchy. There were various Jacobite rebellions and uprisings. And in 1745, Charles Edward Stuart, the son of um, James II, landed in the west of Scotland in July 1745, and he raised the Highland clans. They assembled an army and they advanced through, through Scotland. They had decisive uh, battles at Preston Pans and Falkirk and they marched to Derby, as far as Derby in England. Their plan was to go to London and seize the crown for the Jacobite cause. They turned back from Derby because the government forces were beginning to close in on them they came to Inverness for the winter, where they uh, had a lot of trouble getting supplies. So by the time it reached April 1746, uh, the poorly equipped and poorly supplied Jacobite army, many of them were actually on the verge of starvation, and they assembled on the other side of the moor, where they faced a very superior, uh, well-fed and well-stocked government army who were equipped with uh, much better artillery and a vastly superior force. So their chances were very, very slim of victory. But they assembled nonetheless under the command of Charles Edward Stuart. And I'll take you to the spot where the Highland clans and the Northeast regiments and the Irish pickets and the French soldiers who made up the Jacobite army assembled. So I'm standing at the spot where the Jacobite uh, army assembled under the command of Charles Edward Stuart, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Um, they would face, of course, the government army on the other side of the moor where I began the story. And why is the Battle of Culloden so important and why is it seen as a watershed moment in Scottish history? Well, it's really as much to do with the aftermath of the battle and the implications that would have as the battle itself. The battle was a very bloody and brutal affair. No quarter was given, which meant the wounded were slaughtered in the field where they lay. And after the battle, the victorious uh, Hanoverian government soldiers, the Redcoats, advanced into Inverness and into the rest of the Highlands, where they carried out a policy of brutality, which had a real impact on Gaelic culture. Um, this was recorded, this campaign was recorded in a book called The Lion in Mourning, which was a collection of eyewitness ac accounts which were uh, put together by Bishop Robert Forbes, who was an Episcopalian bishop. These catalogued some of the terrible brutalities that were carried out by the Hanoverian soldiers. Um, the Gaelic language and the bagpipes and Highland dress were uh, prescribed and this was the beginning of the end for the clan system. So massive implications for Scottish and Gaelic culture. The Battle of Culloden today is still viewed as a very poignant moment and a very uh, important moment in Scottish history. So. That's a little bit about the background. You can learn a lot more, of course, if you go online or read some books. So hopefully that's given you something of the um, flavour, a flavour and um, a little bit of the backdrop to the Battle of Culloden.